And now, dear brothers and sisters, dear online listeners, it's time that we start our study today, which is entitled, Time to Learn a Lesson. Everything what we hear today in the media is all about coronavirus. Everything you read today, everything is posted, is all in regard to the coronavirus, what is hap happening in uh, Italy, in Europe, in other countries, and uh, it seems that situation in such a, is at such a desperate uh, stage that people have asking questions, what is going to be happening, what's going to be next, uh, where we are going, how soon this will end, what should we do? When we go to the Centers for Disease Control website, this is official website of the United States of America. Let's see some statistic what show there. This statistic is as of March 27, which is yesterday. This is the latest update uh, yesterday afternoon. So total cases so far for coronavirus reported in United States is 85,356. Total death is 1,246. So this is pretty high and scary number. And when you look at this number that over, one, over 1,200 people already died, uh, people ask question, you know, uh, what's next? I mean, uh, how can we survive this crisis? In Jeremiah chapter 51, verse 46, we read, And lest your heart faint, and ye fear for the rumor that shall be heard in the land. I like the English Standard Version translation. Let not your heart faint, and be not fearful of the report heard in the land. So the report I just showed you, the Bible says that when you hear reports, official reports in the land, don't be afraid of them. But you see, it sounds very abstractive, don't be afraid. I mean, this is the reality, Brother Gennady, what you're talking about, don't be afraid. Well, let's go back to the same website, not to the media, not what media says, but to the official numbers published by the Center of Disease Control in the United States and see the official numbers. I pulled a table which presents the number 10 cases or reasons for death, early death in the United States. And let's focus so far in the bottom line where people die from regular flu with a complication, pneumonia. So if we average this for 2014, 15, 16, 17, and 2018, this is 2018, this is the last, last year, the complete data is available. The average of people dying per year from regular flu is 55,723. From coronavirus, so far died 1,246. So when you compare these numbers, you kind of begin to understand the Bible verse I quoted that do not be afraid of the report spread it or, you know, traveling through the land. Don't be in fear of those rumors. Because when you look at the official statistics, you see completely different picture. You see, the media presents how many people died. The question, why they don't present a hope for people, how thousands and ten thousands of people survived and got healed and went home safely. The same uh, website, Center for Disease Control, there is an article published on March 21st, 2020, weekly U.S. Inf uh, influenza surveillance report. Here what they say, key points. Nationally, influenza A, which is known as H1N1 virus, 
or we knew it in 2009 as swine flu, are the most commonly reported influenza viruses this season. So coronavirus is not the most, but this season, as of March 21st, is the swine flu is the one the most uh, killing people. Previously, influenza B or Victoria viruses predominated nation nationally. Uh, next, one of the key points, I'm skipping several. CDC, which is Center for Disease Control, estimates that so far this season there have been at least 39 million flu illnesses and 400,000 hospitalizations and 24,000 deaths from flu. This is estimate for this season. And when you compare this estimation with the reports, official reports for the coronavirus, you see different picture. Now, is coronavirus a deadly? Yes. Is it dangerous? Yes. Specifically, the older you are, the more risk you have. Um, the first preliminary description of outcomes among patients with uh, COVID-19 in the United States indicates that fatality was highest in persons aged higher than a or older than 85, ranging from 10 to 27 percent, followed by 3 to 11 percent among persons aged 65 to 84 years old, and then 1 to 3 percent among persons aged 55 to 64 years old and less than 1% aged 20 to 54 years, and no fatalities among persons aged younger than 19 years old. So all these commotions, all this drama that uh, schools are shut down, and now everybody is transferred to online school or remote schooling, in, spite, in light of these official numbers, what is given by the Center of Disease Control as an official entity of the United States, it kind of doesn't make sense. Uh, the Oxford, University of Oxford research, so they studied 44,672 confirmed cases of coronaviruses and out of those people, 44,000 plus, 1,023 death. And here with the statistic, they come. That people older than 80 years of age is the highest rate of death. So it's 14.8% uh, case fatality rate. But when you compare to the next chart, it says that people with promorbidity so in other words, people who have other diseases like diabetes, like uh, cardiovascular diseases, the cr chronic uh, lung problems, uh, chronic bronchitis, those people being older than 85 years of, uh, of age and having the, that background and having weak immune system. And on top of that, when they catch the coronavirus, yes, it's a high risk for them that they will not survive. Does it mean that we should ignore the precautions which are uh, widely uh, suggested uh, even by the officials? No. Those precautions measures that when you go shopping, that you keep a distance, you don't talk uh, close to a person, or those who are taking elevators when uh, in a high buildings, you know, not to have more than two people or have wearing masks when you're in an elevator, uh, washing hands, uh, wiping the surfaces, uh, walking on the sunlight because sunlight kills this virus. All these are to be used. All these are very good advices. We are to follow them. Because there is a risk that you can get, get, get sick and if you have some other cold and on top of that you catch coronavirus, it may complicate. So it's good and advisable and strongly recommended to follow all these precautions. But again, let's go back to some more statistics. 
died in accidents in US in 2018, which is unintentional injury, 169,000, almost 170,000 people died or uh, in US of coronavirus so far is a little bit more than 1200 and CDC estimates death from flu by the end of this season as 34,000 plus people so when you compare these two numbers so by the end of the coronavirus when the cor when it will go down and uh, kind of will fade we expect by summer when in the end of the season, they expect about 35,000 people dying from coronavirus or, or in combination coronavirus and, and other flus. Comparing with how many people die in car accidents, it doesn't make sense why media exaggerated this in such a big drama. Everything what media is speaking today is coronavirus, danger, death, and they are showing only pictures how they're taking the coffins out of the hospitals. That's what is in media, that is what in Facebook, that is what on news. But let's uh, go back to the already uh, seen chart and let's move uh, a row, uh, one row up. Diabetes. When uh, I transformed these numbers into the visual chart, and you can see it's obvious that mortality rate from diabetes it is drastically growing. In 2014, it was 76,000 dying per year from diabetes. In 2019, it's 84, almost 85,000. Why media doesn't run a campaign, stop using soda? drinks why media is not showing how people in obesity dying from diabetes uh, with a high blood uh, sugar why they don't why they promote a campaign to remove vending machines selling these soda drinks from colleges universities schools let's go back to the same chart now i kind of uh, shrinked it a little bit Heart disease is the number one leading case of premature, uh, early death in the United States. In the year 2018, 655,000 plus people died from various heart disease, heart attack, uh, high blood pressure, and so on. Almost 600,000 people died from cancer, various forms of cancers. Why media would not take in, into consideration this high number, 600, it's over half a million of people dying er, e uh, yearly. And why would not they run a campaign to promote healthy living? Why would not promote that companies would force their workers, speci specifically those companies that they have office workers, that you can, you can keep working for my company only if you exercise an hour and you prove that you exercise an hour a day. Imagine how many less heart problems we would have if every company would make this as a law. If you're an office worker and you see the whole day in front of a computer, one hour per day, you have to exercise. It's a must. I guarantee that the number would drop half. People would be able to reach 80, 90 years of age, not dying, being 54 of a heart attack. Hosea chapter 4 verse 6, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. But there is another Bible verse I want to bring on the same page to compare. Psalms 119, verse 98. Th though through thy commandments hast made me wiser than mine enemies. Why we as Adventists are wiser? Why we look in the future not being desperate, in agony? 
What's going to happen? What's going to happen? We have the great controversy. We have the eye cell. We have the spirit of prophecy. We have Matthew chapter 24. What can we learn of this? The coronavirus and what the media is making out of it today is just, I would say, a rehearsal of a bigger drama to come. Matthew chapter 24, verse 7 and 8. For nations shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences. The pestilences, this is basically epidemic, and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. This is just the beginning. As you see the official statistics, coronavirus is not that scary as media makes it to appear. The, the numbers you look on official websites absolutely give different picture. And the, it's a picture of hope, not a picture of desperation. It's a picture of uh, everything will be fine. It's not that scary. Our children are not in a high risk. Yes, let's keep our grandmas, grandpas safe. But our children, they are not in danger. It's that one of those kind of a flu. As an experiment, my wife showed me something on uh, Facebook, somebody posted, and she pulled a bottle which we bought in the beginning of last year. In the beginning of 2019. It's a spray for cleaning the bath bathrooms. And there, it lists which kind of uh, viruses or bacteria it kills. Among those vir viruses, coronavirus is there. It's not something new. If you have a bottle of those uh, killing the viruses, cleaning the bathtub or something, you know, uh, and you bought it last year or even two years older, read the label, coronavirus is there. Media made out of it a big, big, big beast which scared the people. But let's go now to the Word of God and read something very important. So the question now remains, what can we do about it? We can and should learn something out of this. The time is fast coming when the controlling power of labor unions will be very oppressive. Again and again, the Lord has instructed that our people are to take their families away from the cities, into the country, where they can raise their own provisions. For in the future, in the future, from now on, problems of buying and selling will be a very serious one. We should now begin to heed the instructions given us over and over again. Get out of the cities into rural districts, where the houses are not crowded closely together, and where you will be free from the interference of enemies. These are just recent pictures I'm showing you from the shelves made only now because of coronavirus. You can see empty shelves. Beautiful apartments, very fancy, very modern. How many people, thousands of people and millions of people live in the big cities and apartments? Luckily, now with the coronavirus, there is food in the stores. There is still not that a big of a drama as it can be. But now imagine you live in this apartment in New York, Washington, Los Angeles, in Rome, in Berlin, when, where you are, in Moscow, in Sydney. And imagine that the water supply had been poisoned by virus or other chemicals. And in order to prevent major death, the government shuts down the water. What do you do in apartments without water? And you're, because of some uh, pandemic, you're locked in apartments, you cannot walk. 
and the government will give you just a bag of this bottled water for you to survive. Like, let's say, four bottles per person per day. What do you do? Compare with those people who have their private property, they have their well. It's a one or two acres of land. They, can, they have some apple trees, they can grow their corn and pumpkins. And compared to those stuck in those cells, in the apartments, in the big cities. In, uh, uh, last, in about uh, 1890, 1895, there was a big depression in Australia. The poor are everywhere. The banks have ruined the country. Thousands are destitute of money. They are thrown out of work and distress is everywhere. How many thousands of people laid off work now due to coronavirus? The country is in financial ruin. Our faith has been tested and tried. We have been pressed with poverty on every side. Families were continually coming to me and telling me that they had no money to buy bread. But what could I do? I immediately set to work on my garden. Men who were in need, some of these destitute of daily food. People from Sydney, from big cities, were coming. Says, Mrs. White, what can we do? I have children. I have no money to buy bread. Here's brother. We have plenty of land here. Work on it. That's how they solve the issues. Brothers and sisters, there are two types of crises ahead of us. First one is accumulative signs of the end, financial crisis pandemics, calamities, various turmoils, etc. And those are following one another, they are cumulative, they are all sometimes overlapping or one after another. And the next one will be more severe. And the following one, even harder, even more dangerous. We are not to confuse with the Sunday law and the time of trouble time. This is a two separate things. Sometimes when you read spirit of prophecy statements, you have to be very careful not to, not to take out of the context. Because you can easily manipulate or even your brain can be manipulated by someone misusing the statements. But when you read carefully the word of God, it's very clear. There are two types of crises. One we can call kind of temporarily or accumulative signs, so it's following events, one by one or one upon another. And the final crisis, the close of probation, the Sunday law, which will make a date and time to get rid of all the Sabbath keepers and the time of trouble of Jacob. This is a different things. Now, all the following statements I'm reading, they're talking about temporal crises, about the events in the last day, scenes. So they are crises which are following one another or one upon another. Soon grievous troubles will arise among the nations, trouble that will not cease until Jesus comes. So they will escalate more and more and more. I saw that the powers of the earth are now being shaken and that events come in order. And here is the order. War and rumors of war, sword, famine, and pestilence are first to shake the powers of earth. Then the voice of God will shake the sun, moon, and stars, and the earth also. You see, this is, as I said, there are two different events in different orders. Now let's go back. What can we learn from this coronavirus? What people can learn now being stuck in their apartments in Italy, in other countries, in New York? Brothers and sisters, what can we learn? What should we learn? My warning is, keep out of the cities. Ere long, there will be such strife 
and confusion in the cities that those who wish to leave them will not be able. Now, you're in Italy. You are in an apartment in Rome. What do you do? Can you do something? You cannot even take a walk on the sunlight on the street. And by the way, the sunshine kills the virus and it would be very healthy for people to walk outside in the parks in the sunshine. But you see, the government, the authorities tells you the opposite. Stay closed in. What can you do? Soon the time will come that people who are in the cities, in those complex apartments, they will be longing, willing, desiring to leave, but they won't be able because the forces, security forces, they will lock the roads, lock you inside, and there is nothing you can do about it. And only those who have their personal property, private wealth, living in a country, they will be like kings and queens. So this pandemic, what we are going through today, COVID-19 or coronavirus, this is only a rehearsal, a little preview. Mm -hmm. This is just a, a bell for us, a ringing bell. Time to obey the word of God. For years, Spirit of Prophecy says, I was pleading with our people, move away from the cities. People didn't move. Now God gives them kind of, you know, a sense what's going to happen. And it's going to be worse according to the prophecy. The news. You see how easily they can take certain information, twist it, pervert it, and misrepresent it. Even with this coronavirus. This is just one of another kind of a flu. From other flus, you saw over 50,000 people die yearly in the United States from flus and complication of those flu like pneumonia. And none of the previous years, there was no such panic as this year. So why this year they decided to do such a panic about it? Well, there are reasons behind, you know, we can only suppose and uh, this is not our mission. It's not neither my mission to talk the conspiracy. It's just, you know, we can only think what, uh, uh, what can happen, you know. I, I mean, definitely the stock market will be changed. Definitely the real estate market will survive some changes after this. Uh, many people lost their jobs. And uh, definitely the richer will get richer and the poor will get poorer. How easily media can manipulate the information, twist the information, misrepresent. And now people are so scared that if they would, the government would suggest, you know, to make the vaccination mandatory, everybody would say yes. Because people are so scared. And as I read, my people are perishing for the lack of knowledge, for the lack of vision. Unfortunately, people trust more media than they would do their personal research. The work of Satan will be carried on through agents. Their hearts are fully determined to make war against those who keep the commandments of God. Now listen carefully. This class feel that it is a virtue to talk, write, and act out the most bitter hatred against us. I mean, Sabbath keepers. We need not look for fair dealing or for justice at their hands. Many of them are inspired by Satan with insane, insane ma madness against those who are keeping the commandments of God. What now? Listen carefully what media will do in our regard. We shall be malign, maligned and misrepresented. All our motives and actions will be misjudged. And now in this case of coronavirus, you can see easily, obvious picture, 
how media is misrepresenting the data and scaring the people. When we will be preaching the truth, the true day of the Lord, the Sabbath, we will be promoting it. What will media do? Misrepresent our actions, misrepresent our motives, and in the end, we will be the guiltiest one. We will, we will be named the scapegoats. And for the security of the nations, for the safety of people of United States and of other countries around the world, people will, in one week, it's, you see how media is working rapidly. In one month, how much threat and fear was uh, in, uh, given into, and in, uh, uh, still into the people. One month is enough to pass a Sunday law. Couple weeks. This week they start the campaign. Next week, week people are ready to vote for change of constitution. And the following week they come to the conclusion for the safety of the nation we have to kill the Sabbath keepers. But you see this is not going to happen suddenly from Monday. The crisis is accumulative. The events are coming, they are developing and evolving worse and worse and worse. And therefore, again and again, the Sunday party is strengthening itself in its false claims. And this will mean oppression to those who determine to keep the Sabbath of the Lord. We are to place ourselves where we can carry out the Sabbath commandment in its fullness. Now, if you're in apartments, if you're in a big cities, and you all have neighbors around you, what do you do? How about where you are in uh, rural places and you have three acres of land and you just relax in the shade or on your porch on the Sabbath? Can you keep the Sabbath there? Sure. The Protestant world have set up an idol a Sabbath. And they are treading in the footsteps of the papacy. For this reason, I see the necessity of the people of God moving out of their cities into retired country places where they may cultivate the land and raise their own produce. I see the necessity of making haste to get all these things ready for the crisis. Brothers and sisters, what would you think about me if I would tell you an experience that I was seeing that the, it's yellow and it's go, about to turn the red light and it just says in my mind, Lord, save me and accelerate. What would you think about me as a driver, as a Christian? That's presumptuous. That's presumptuous. It's crazy. You know, you're passing the red light with a prayer, Lord, save me. Will God make extra miracles to preserve me, uh, to save me from an accident? One time I may escape by chance, because somebody will be smart and think that a crazy guy is driving, and they will let me go. Brothers and sisters, unfortunately, we are so far, including me, these kind of drivers. For how many years we have these statements, move away from the cities. Crisis is coming. What did we do about it? <clears throat> now and on, onward, till the close of time, the people of God, <clears throat> excuse me, the people of God should be more earnest, more wide awake, not trusting in their own wisdom, but in the wisdom of their leader. <clears throat> They should set aside days of fasting and prayer. Entire abstinence from food may not be required, but they should eat sparingly of the most simple food. Well, if you fast at least three or a week, definitely you cannot be completely from food. You need to drink. You need to eat an apple in the morning, uh, some salad in the, uh, at lunch, and skip a dinner to basic give you energy to do the daily duties. So it's a long fasting. But why we need that? 
we are living in a time that demands genuine humiliation and mo most earnest prayer. We are nearing the most important crisis that has ever come upon the world. If we are not wide awake and watching, it will find us unprepared. And the next statement from the Acts of Apostles, page 431. God desires His people to prepare for the soon coming crisis. Prepared or unprepared, they must all meet it. And those only who have brought their lives into conformity to the divine standard will stand firm at the time of test and trial. Brothers and sisters, in regard to coronavirus, I have a very good news. Don't believe media. Go and do your own research. Go to cdc.gov and see the data, see the real numbers, compare them, and you will see completely different picture. And you will see that media is just trying to frighten you and scare you. But I have bad news in regard to future. It's going to be worse. This is just a rehearsal. But the Bible says, See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. So there are going to be more financial crises, more epidemics, more serious, more deadly, a real deadly, not misrepresented data, a real threat. And those who have their houses out of the cities, they will do way better through that time of, of problem or, or crisis. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 5. 1 Peter 3, 14. Be not afraid of their terror, neither be troubled. As a conclusion, brothers, of this study for today, uh, dear listeners of this study, do your own research. Don't believe the media because you can see, it's obvious how media can twist the masses and they misrepresent data and make people believe the false theories. And we know the prophecy says the media will be used to twist our motives, our actions. And we will, do, be, we will sincerely do our best. But that will be presented by media as we are working the ruin of the country. We are a threat for the nation. But this is the final act of drama. But until that day, there we are going to have more crisis. Get ready. Learn a lesson and be prepared. And be not afraid of their terror, as we read in Psalm 119. The word of God makes me wiser than my enemies. As a Christian, we don't have enemies. No, government is not our enemy. As long as it does not interferes with the Ten Commandments, whatever government tells us to do, we will do and we should do. And we are not anti-government entity. We are not to promote conspiracy theories. We are to preach the gospel and the gospel is. More crisis is coming, is going to be worse. This is the gospel. This is the message. But in this time, the gospel says, there is a group of people who have patience, who obey the word of God, they keep the commandments, and they have faith of Jesus. I want to be with that group, wiser than those out there. Amen.